Good day, folks. Pastor Jim Thomas from the Village Chapel here in Nashville, Tennessee with your daily devotional. Reading from uh, one of my favorite Bible teachers over the years, John Stott, and this uh, book is called Through the Bible, Through the Year. And if you uh, get a copy of this, by the way, he'll just kind of uh, walk you through at a sort of 60,000 foot view uh, through the entire uh, Bible, you know, Genesis all the way through Revelation. So it's a, if you're looking for something that'll help you do that walk through the Bible in a year um, and understand some of the uh, tr- timeless and transforming truths of the scriptures. Uh, I can think of no better guide than uh, John Stott. I'm going to read uh, this one, which um, uh, is focused in on the image of God in the human person. This is a uh, an important and relevant question today. What does it mean to be human, to be a human person? Um, uh, there are so many questions that flow from that about uh, everything from from uh, knowledge of our our origin and uh, an understanding of uh, the difference or this the distinctions between human beings and the rest of creation, if there are any, and of course um, um, who we belong to. What does that mean to belong? It seems like we have these very deep-seated feelings of longing. And um, what is the answer to our longing? Um, I suggest to you uh, that we look to the scriptures. There we find that we, uh, we belong. And uh, we belong to our Father who art in heaven, the one that made us in his image. Genesis 127 is how John Stott begins this day's reading. So God created man in his own image, in the image of God, he created him. The climax of God's creative activity was the appearance of human beings. And the way in which Genesis expresses this high point is to describe them as having been created in the image of God. Male and female created he them. And so it's really powerful. The uh, image of God uh, implanted in both males and females as God creates human persons. They aren't just the random co-location of atoms and chemicals. They aren't just a accidental, happy accident. Uh, but no, there's a mind behind it all, a designer behind it all. And, um, and he did more than merely design a machine. He designed us in his image. And that's, that's, that changes everything, doesn't it? When you think about your own life and whether life has any meaning or purpose, whether your life matters. Um, you were created in the image of God. Now, let's uh, turn to the God who made us and uh, continue to learn from him through his word. Uh, John Stott goes on to say that we've been created in the image of God, but scholars are not altogether agreed on what the divine image in human beings means. And so he's going to give us, uh, I'll just tell you this in advance, um, I've got one more paragraph to read, but then he starts opening up and gives us, you know, six or seven things of what it could possibly mean to be created in the image of God. You'll want to have a pencil or at least uh, listen carefully to those things. Some think it means that human beings are God's representatives exercising dominion over the rest of creation in his place. Others conclude that God's image alludes to the special relationship that he has established between himself and us. But if we see the expression both in its immediate context in Genesis and in the broader perspective of Scripture, it seems to refer to all those human qualities or capacities that render us unlike the animals and like God. What are these, John Stott asks, and now he will very succinctly and briefly give us a bunch of them. First, we human beings are rational and self-conscious. So you can't really say that about a cockroach. Um, uh, um, Aardvark is not very rational. Um, But human beings are rational and self-conscious. 
conscious. Secondly, we are moral, having a conscience that urges us to do what we perceive to be right. Or uh, at the very least, one must admit um, that no matter who you are, no matter what culture you live in, there are some things that are deemed to be right and universally accepted as such, and others that are universally accepted as wrong. Where did that come from? And why is so much of it common to all of humanity? Mm. So first, created rationally, are created as rational and self-conscious creatures. Second, we have a moral conscience, and it urges us uh, to do what we perceive to be right. Thirdly, we are creative like our creator, able to appreciate what is beautiful to the ear and the eye. And that's so true, especially living here in Nashville. So many folks that are creative and uh, can express themselves so beautifully. Um, as we, yes, using borrowed materials, it's God that created A440. No one else did that. Um, <clears throat> it's God that created the color blue, that we call blue anyway. And um, <clears throat> so we borrow his stuff and we get to, we, we get to share in, uh, in the, the thrill of creativity um, as we do math, uh, art, uh, those sorts of things, engineering, all that sort of thing. Thirdly, so we're, we're, we're creative. Thirdly, we are creative, uh, but able to appreciate what is beautiful to the ear and the eye. Fourthly, we are social, I like that, able to establish with one another authentic relationships of love. For God is love, and by making us in his own image, he's given us the capacity to love him and to love others. Ah, may the Lord help us to do that better, uh, each and every one of us. Fifthly, we have a spiritual faculty that makes us hunger after God. There's this chronic longing inside of you, inside of me, to know the one who made us. Um, and not just to know him as the designer creator, but as Father who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. That's We, we pray that all the time. And so he's created us to have a spiritual faculty that makes us hunger to know him. Thus, we are uniquely able to think and to choose, to create, to love, and to worship. Stott closes out this uh, particular day's reading this way. Unfortunately, however, we have to add that the image of God in us has been defaced so that every part of our humanness has been tainted with self-centeredness. Yet God's image has not been completely destroyed. On the contrary, both the Old Testament and the New Testament affirm that human beings still bear God's image and that this is the reason why we must respect them. The sanctity of human life arises from the value of God's image bearers. Human beings are God-like beings. They deserve to be loved and served. And so there's this intrinsic value that Bible-believing Christians um, see in every human person, whether they agree with us or not, about God, about the Bible, about the way we should live our lives, we see every single human life as being a potential image bearer of God. And um, no matter how twisted, distorted, or, or marred that or defaced that image may be, each person's life has intrinsic value because it was created in the image of God and has the capacity to bear or reflect that image. And so we are to love and to serve others uh, as those who would bear the image of God. This is from John Stotts, Through the Bible Through the Year. And uh, the uh, selection is called The Image of God. Highly recommend it to you. Let me close this in prayer. Thank you, Lord for this perspective on what it means to be a human person.
Not only, Lord, um, have you radically changed our view of our own selves, but you've given us a basis upon which we might look at others and um, value others. Every single human life from the womb to the tomb has intrinsic value because you have put your image on each and every human person, Lord. Help us to lean into that to, uh, uh, as we consider who we are, what we are as human persons. And also, Lord, plant within us just a, a great love uh, for our neighbors, uh, for those that live down the street and in another state and another country, uh, for those who look differently than us, act differently than we do, believe differently than we do. Give us this amazing love of Jesus Christ. May it be poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit, and may we, your people, um, love those who bear the image of God. Pray this in Jesus' name, for his sake, for his glory. Amen and amen. God bless you. Have a good one. Daily Devotions with Pastor Jim Thomas is a resource of the Village Chapel in Nashville, Tennessee. If you find this daily devotional beneficial, leave a review and share it with friends and family. For more resources or to support our ministry, visit our website, thevillagechapel.com. Artwork for this podcast by Kim Thomas. Music by Phil Kagey.